What's up guys? Mr. Stark back again and gonna show you a video on how to tap a motor. Now, this particular motor is in the lab at Porter and Chester and we've got several of these motors as you can see across this whole span of walls. We've got these three-phase uh, motors that can operate on either three-phase 208 or three-phase 240 volts. And if we look at the tap, you can see that there's a tap for all of this. Now basically, this goes back to motor uh, calculations because we would have had a nameplate uh, on our motor that we took our calcs from. I'm not really here for that lesson, but since we're looking at the nameplate, let's turn this around so that you can kind of see uh, what's going on with the tap. So the first thing that we mean about the tap is it's just another thing that we have to know how to wire. You're focusing on the low voltage. Now low voltage, doesn't mean low voltage as most of us think, you know, low voltage. That just means the, the lower of the nominal higher voltages that we use in the field. So this tap represents the low voltage right next to it. This tap represents the higher voltage. So if we look at the low voltage tap, we'll notice that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine leads in this motor. And they're all labeled on the individual wire itself. So in a minute, we're gonna look at the wire and you're gonna see a bunch of wires that come out of the little head, the little enclosure, and they have numbers on them. So it's important when you're wiring these in lab that you don't cut the wire, don't make it shorter. We wanna just try to clean up the head and make a connection without cutting the wire back further than it is because they're already pretty short. So this tap represents that if I find wire numbers T4, remember T stands for load, in this case for motors, T4, T5, T6, they're showing that they're all connected to one line, which means T4, T5, and T6 are all gonna get spliced together and put under one wire nut. Then you have T7, T1, going to your line one, which is your, you know, your phase conductors. So you'll be pulling down this uh, green field, you'll be pulling three hots in the ground. One of the hots, doesn't matter which one, one of the hots is gonna tie on to T1 and T7 together. So that will take up one more wire nut. So three wires under that wire nut. Hot plus T1 plus T7. T8, T2, get tied on to your next hot conductor of your three phase set. T9 and T3, get tied onto your last hot conductor of your three phase set. So in all, if you've wired this correctly, you will have four wire nuts inside this enclosure. Let's take a look at the enclosure. If we swing back around, you'll see how small this enclosure truly is. There's not a lot of room in there and you can also see how small some of these wires that come from the motor are, are starting to get. Here's the splice that has T4 uh, T5 and T6 all spliced together under one wire nut. And then obviously one of these sets is your phase conductor. Another set is your phase conductor. And another set is your phase conductors. And we pulled blacks all the way down to these. So four wire nuts tapped correctly. And we would have to then tuck these into this tiny little hole, put a cover on it. And that's what that would look like when all of them are in there with a cover and you close that little, sometimes we call them pecker heads, but this is the motor control housing for the terminal conductors so we can pick them up. And of course we have a guard on the motor shaft because it's kind of an OSHA thing. And if we wanted to see what rotation the motor was moving, we would take off this head of the cap and we would have a piece of tape and you'd see the shaft spinning and you would know if it's clockwise or counterclockwise. Also, if you remember, we learned that if it's a three-phase motor, we could adjust the rotation of the motor just by swapping any two leads anywhere in the circuit. We could move this one over to here, or we can move that one over to here. We don't need to do that because we actually have the contactor with the bridge jumpers that go across the forward contactor and the reverse contactor. Pretty cool. Uh, you will have more on this motor, so when you get back to the lab, you'll be wiring these up. You'll be pulling wires all the way through from the load side of the disconnect 
you'll go through into the line side of the contactor, you'll come off the load side of the contactor, and then you'll come back into your motor and we'll have that whole sequence work quite well. So hopefully you got a little bit out of that. I'd give you more on the nameplate, but that's for another lesson. Right now we're just into the taps. So see you on the next video.